This is Marimeg Meg Beach in world famous El Nido, Palawan. Am I about to tell you that I've got an Airbnb here too? I wish. But no, I just wanted to share this. Share this and see it side by side with White Beach of Port Barton, San Vicente. I know I've shared quite a bit of Port Barton, so I want to discuss the elephant in the room. How does it stack up versus El Nido? We all know El Nido, and rightfully so, it deserves the praise that it gets. But with Port Barton as an up-and-coming destination, can it really go head-to-head -head with El Nido? I've prepared some criteria to see how each one fares versus the other. Let's see! From Manila, both places can be reached by the Puerto Princesa Airport, with smaller airports nearby servicing each one as alternatives. For Port Barton, San Vicente Airport is about a two-hour drive while the El Nido Airport is within a 10-minute drive to El Nido Town proper. These are, however, smaller airports and more likely, you're going to be taking the cheaper flight into Puerto Princesa, where Port Barton is a three-hour van ride away versus El Nido six hours. In my previous video, I mentioned the many unbeatable dining choices that await you in Port Barton. However, with El Nido as a more developed town, there are of course more dining choices available in all prices. As a town that's been growing in the last two decades, El Nido would offer more choices and conveniences for travelers. The trade-off with these developments at El Nido would however be the congestion of its streets and its main beachfront which has been deemed a no-swimming zone. While Port Barton has less in terms of choices, it maintains its countryside charm where generations-old families are still living side-by-side -side new structures in this emerging tourist destination. An upside to El Nido's advanced development is the wide variety of accommodations that you can choose from. From hostels, glamping sites, and other budget-friendly stays to luxury accommodations, El Nido has something to offer all types of travelers. On the other hand, Port Barton's developmental stages have been geared predominantly towards the backpacker market with more rustic style accommodations, leaving a void for luxury stays. With the Palawan again being named as the number one island in the world, what we're going to look into next would be the beaches comprising El Nido on one hand and Port Barton on the other. El Nido actually has so many beaches, so let me just mention a few of the best ones. Their Snakpan Beach, with its long and wide pristine beachfront, has arguably become the default favorite beach of many travelers. Situated back-to-back -back with Kalitan Beach, Nakpan has reached its iconic status as often pictured in drone shots by travel vloggers all over the world. Your visit to Nakpan easily gives you great 2-for-1 value. Most visitors just take a day trip to Nakpan, but I think it's one location that's truly worthy of an overnight or even a few nights stay. It's definitely a change of pace from El Nido town proper and a peaceful stay if you can do away with some of the needed conveniences you have in town. Another iconic beach in El Nido is Marimegmeg Beach or more commercially known as Vanilla Beach. Some people might be put off by the strip mall being built along this stretch, while some people might actually like it. Either way, don't miss out on this beach because this is also one of El Nido's iconic sites. With tranquil waters and El Nido's famous jagged cliffs on the horizon, it's hard not to see why this is one of the more popular sites here. I would say that this is one of the more posh and more developed beach areas here in El Nido. Despite the development, I think they've done a great job in modernizing it without compromising the beach's natural beauty. And there's definitely a lot more to explore at El Nido. There's the Baltan, Duli, Korongkorong, and Galan, to name a few. For this short video, I won't get to feature them, but I hope to do so in the future. For Port Barton, there aren't as many places to easily explore, but one of them would be White Beach. It's unassuming and generically named, but oft times the highlight of the trip to Port Barton. From the main town, it's about a 30 minute ride by dirt bike or a 10 minute ride by boat. Not too far from the main beach of Port Barton, 
White Beach is a quiet little beach with even finer sand lined up with coconut trees and palm trees. It's unobstructed with developments except for a few huts available here. There's usually no more than a dozen or so people in this entire beachfront. With this picture-perfect scene, it's not hard to see why travelers would nickname this as paradise. While most travelers have included the famous Pamwayan Falls in their Port Barton itinerary, what's often missed out on would be nearby Pamwayan Beach. This beach is definitely off the beaten path. There are no restaurants, no resorts, nor tour groups on this coast. An even smaller local community calls this home, so this is probably as organic a beachside community as you can find anywhere in the world. Pamuayan Beach is a vast and tranquil beach that offers an even better view of Port Barton Bay. It's just about a one-hour hike outside the main town of Port Barton, so I'm actually surprised that this place has maintained its relative obscurity and low-key status for Port Barton's travelers. So, is it going to be El Nido or Port Barton? I'm with you that it's a hard decision and it's highly subjective. If you don't have much time and need a budget-friendly quick weekend getaway coming from Puerto Princesa, Port Barton would probably be your best bet. Unless you're taking the more expensive flights into El Nido directly, Port Barton would definitely give you more with less time. And if we're just talking about the main towns, Port Barton would definitely give you a more relaxing vacation with easy access to the beach while El Nido would give you more variety. If you do have more time to spare and are looking for more adventures, El Nido is definitely the way to go. Aside from the handful of sites I've mentioned, there's actually much more to see in El Nido, and El Nido would give you more activities and variety in a way that Port Barton can't. But the bottom line would be this. El Nido and Port Barton would not be an apples-to-apples -apples comparison since El Nido covers a much greater area than just the main town. A more precise comparison would be to compare El Nido with the entire municipality of San Vicente, which Port Barton is a part of. While San Vicente is even more up and coming, this comparison between El Nido and San Vicente will be a long debate in the years to come. Now I currently don't have too much material on San Vicente, but I hope to have more on this in the future. For now, I'm going to be referring you to my favorite travel bloggers jumping places as they recently explored San Vicente. And whether it's El Nido or Port Barton, or if El Nido versus San Vicente, it doesn't matter. Let's look to enjoy our one and only Palawan, the world's best island.